Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. El Nino is over with officially. I want to get into what that means and also what it doesn't mean for the upcoming hurricane season. And thank you for taking the time to subscribe to the channel. So this chart, I know a little bit crazy, uh, but uh, here we are uh, as we work our way over the next uh, couple of months. You see the blue coming in here? That's La Nina. El Nino, uh, where we are now, that, that's done with. We're actually in a neutral phase right now in between El Nino and La Nina. El Nino typically lasts around nine uh, months to about 12 months. La Nina could last a few years, and we're actually seeing a very quick transition to La Nina. Sometimes you stay in this neutral position for months and months, but really not the case this time. We're going to get into a La Nina. Now, La Nina will be around, this is August, September, and October. That is the peak of the hurricane season. It should be a moderate La Nina. Well, what the heck does that mean? Now, first thing is first, typically, Typically, and this is this is not a channel that is going to play on hyper fear whatsoever. I'm just giving you the information. Typically, in a La Nina season, a La Nina pattern, and uh, when that coincides with a hurricane season, that usually means more storms. You see, La Nina years, there's a lot more action versus El Nino years, there's not as much. Uh, with that said, there's a lot of other variables in place. Now, here's a breakdown as well. So, in a La Nina season, on average. Uh, for a hurricane season, there are 17 named storms and nine become hurricanes. Versus El Nino, there would be 11 and five become hurricanes. This is just average. So you can see typically in El Nino season, well, uh, that seems better. But unfortunately, we're in a La Nina season, uh, so that means a more active hurricane uh, season. But that does not tell us where the storms are going to go. Well, why does uh, La Nina uh, create more storms? Why do more storms happen in that type of pattern? Well, this is what happens. It means less wind shear. Those are winds way up high that come across, knock off the thunderstorm tops, so the storms can't really build, and we can't get a lot of hurricanes and tropical storms developing. With uh, a less wind shear out there, though, for this upcoming hurricane season, that would mean typically more hurricanes. And I do believe we are going to get deep down the list. There will be a lot of tropical storms. There will be a lot of hurricanes, and I know a lot of folks are talking about that. But that does not mean we are necessarily going to get hit with one. Uh, it's a wait and see. We need to see how these storms develop in the current pattern at the time. Sometimes there are La Nina seasons, a lot of storms, but they all kind of stay out to sea. Other times uh, you could have an El Nino season. There's only a couple storms, but you get hit. So it's all relative. Uh, with that said, there are also more variables than just La Nina. Very curious to see how the Saharan dust uh, kind of works into the equation pockets of dry air as we get into the season. So yes, do believe there'll be a lot of action and I'll be tracking it storm by storm, but it's still a wait and see on what may come our way. So I'll do the worry and kind of behind the scenes and I'll let you know everything that I'm seeing. Now still watching a few spots here, one over here, this spot over here that may develop. I want to get into that and still watching these tropical waves. But like I was showing you yesterday, these big tropical waves are coming off. Kind of unusual for this time of year to see how big they have been. Here's another one coming off the coast of Africa. However, However, with that said, kind of like I was just talking about, there is a lot of dry air out here. So as these work across, they kind of get eaten away. There's a lot of dust. We're going to see more dust moving in the next few days into parts of the Eastern Caribbean. Now, you see this tropical wave here approaching South America. This one is going to increase our chance of rain in the Southeastern Caribbean uh, for later into the weekend and early next week. So I'll, I'll be watching that. We're going to be tracking that together through the weekend. Now, let me start with the big picture. Here's this area up here that left Florida, but it's the tail end of it. Still, this big plume of moisture around still bringing some rain to parts of South Florida even uh, for today. Slight chance it develops, not looking like uh, the case for the most part, so that one's starting to get out of the picture, but still watching out for this moisture. Everything on track from our last few videos. Look what happens here. This is by Sunday moisture starts to build. A couple things are happening here on this map. This is the European model, and you see the moisture building here from the Western Caribbean into the Gulf, and on top of it, I mentioned that next tropical wave sliding into the Southeastern Caribbean by the time we get into Sunday and Monday, which will increase the chance of rain, although it's gonna to have to fight through some dust. So this is Sunday. Now let me take you out in time further, and then we'll stop it here as we get into, this would be Monday. Uh, by the time we hit Monday, start to get a broad circulation right here. I want to show you what all the computer models are go going to do in a second or trying to do, but a broad circulation through here. Now, I don't just look at the computer models. It's a lot of land around here. So for something to kind of 
develop in the Bay of Campeche. It does have to kind of sneak in there, and that circulation needs to stay over water long enough for it to develop. But either way, this here is by Tuesday. It looks like there's going to be some circulation, either a weak storm system or a classified uh, tropical depression or tropical storm in the western Gulf of Mexico. You see it here. This is by Monday into Tuesday. Now, good news and bad news is uh, we need to get some rain in spots. It looks like we're going to get some rain in parts of Texas. Some parts of Texas need it desperately, others not so much. And then you get back toward Mexico where we desperately do need to get some of the rain. So, uh, but the on the flip side, some of us uh, will get some rain that we've already had some flooding in parts of uh, Texas and it, we may get it too quickly. So while this could be some good news in Mexico, we got to get some of the rain. We need, we, we definitely need to get that. Could come a little bit too quickly, but either way, it looks like tropical depression or tropical storm or just kind of a sloppy system will start to work in on Wednesday to parts of Texas and Mexico. Even and some rain could get into uh, Louisiana. So looks like something is going to try to develop. Now, will it actually develop? We'll see. The European model does have this as a, a low-end tropical storm or tropical depression. The American model kind of go back and forth. Same thing. No big changes. Right now, it doesn't have it as a tropical storm. We'll see how the uh, latest runs of that do. Canadian model has it a tropical storm. Uh, uh, the ICON, the German model, doesn't have it forming into a storm. But all of these models, regardless, are seeing a broad circulation uh, through through here as we work our way into early next week has my attention in this time of year uh, with these water temperatures things can kind of spin up quickly so uh, the strength of these things always a variable that's another variable as we go through the upcoming season so here's the American model showing that there's the buildup of moisture there this is by the time we get into Sunday right so you see here that moisture over toward Belize Honduras uh, Nicaragua Guatemala El Salvador seeing a lot of rain down through Costa Rica not as much for Panama and there's some of the rain there trying to creep into the southeastern Caribbean. But right here, this is by Monday, showing the rain kind of a sloppy system uh, working its way into the western Gulf and the Bay of Campeche, some of the rain lifting up toward Louisiana, Texas. And there may be a little bit of a spin right in here. So we'll see if that tropical storm does try to form. And the first name on the list this year is Alberto. That is the first name in the Atlantic Basin, the Atlantic Ocean, Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico is the Atlantic Basin. And then whatever this is tries to kind of push on shore late Tuesday into Wednesday. So it's that tail end, that leftover moisture right there from South Florida back through parts of the Bahamas, especially the northern Bahamas. I've been watching that overnight. And western Cuba, Cayman Islands, we could get a few showers. Jamaica, though, were mainly dry. And for us in Jamaica, all the way over toward the eastern Caribbean, not much for today. So here's that closer look. Some heavier areas of rain, parts of Costa Rica, even Panama, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, Belize will get some scattered showers. Yucatan in Mexico, we've been doing better. Guyana and Suriname. I'm still seeing some rain. Puerto Rico, some afternoon storms. Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Even Haiti, we had a couple afternoon storms yesterday. Turks and Caicos were dry. This is our Saturday. I covered this, watching this moisture plume. But then you see kind of scattered showers coming at us in the southeastern Caribbean by Sunday. Sunday into Monday, that rain chance is going to get higher with that next tropical wave that will be moving in. So let me show you some of the rain totals. These are three-day totals. Takes us through today, through our Saturday, into Sunday. So this is not all at once, but South Florida over towards, say, Freeport, down toward New Providence. Uh, we are going to see an additional 75 millimeters of rain or three inches of rain plus in some spots, tacking on to some of the uh, flooding issues we've had. And as we work our way toward western Cuba, we could get some spots that get around 150 millimeters of rain or six inches of additional rain. Uh, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, not as much for us. Here are the Cayman Islands. Here we are in Jamaica. Uh, just a passing shower. There'll be a couple. We've had some isolated storms the last few days. Uh, Turks and Caicos generally really dry. Eastern Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. This would be isolated stuff. So if you get a thunderstorm or some passing showers, uh, British and U.S. Virgin Islands back through uh, Puerto Rico, uh, we could get a quick 25 millimeters of rain or an inch of rain. Montserrat, Ceiba, Stacia, we need some of the rain. Uh, not a ton, but uh, Anguilla, St. Bart's, Antigua, and Barbuda, slightly better chance the next few days. I'll cover that in a moment. And then you see some spotty showers, Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada. Not a ton. The best chance though would start to creep in on Sunday 
So Trinidad and Tobago, we may get a few spots that get 50 millimeters of rain or two inches of rain uh, Sunday into Monday. It's that moisture with that next tropical wave headed our way. Guyana and Suriname, isolated areas of flooding. There's uh, Mexico as a whole, uh, generally on the dry side. We are starting, though, in South Mexico, and then, of course, back through the Yucatan, a better chance of some rain. So that is some good news to pass along. Thank you for sharing this channel across Mexico. And then we'll see what happens as we get into next week from my friends in Texas and and back toward uh, Mexico with the potential of a developing uh, system. But watching out for some downpours, could get scattered showers, uh, could get upwards of 50 millimeters plus of rain in parts of Belize. There's the moisture plume. There's a little flare up in this. This is that system that came out of Florida. Uh, it is over the Gulf Stream, that warm water. So it is flaring up, but no big signs of organization with that. No signs of organization as we work our way into the Eastern Pacific. Look how this is tied together all the way from the Atlantic region of Canada, all the way down through the Caribbean and Central. Central America. As we work our way toward parts of the mid-Atlantic in the United States today, there'll be some stronger, if not severe, storms. That'll be possible. And then across the uh, northern parts of the uh, U.S. as we work our way into the uh, weekend. But that moisture plume, it's crazy how, the, how big this is, uh, just still around as we work our way into Saturday. And then we'll see some additional rain headed toward Bermuda. So this is our Saturday afternoon. And then as we work our way into Sunday, we'll watch some of that moisture getting closer to the Caribbean. But it does need to fight through some of that dust that I was mentioning there is some dust around so we've had some spotty showers around in parts of New England and up through the Atlantic region of Canada but at times we're going to see the increasing uh, the rain increase even further through the weekend especially as we wait, uh, make our way into tomorrow on the edge of uh, Nova Scotia and then swinging back toward uh, Newfoundland especially later in the day tomorrow the rain chance will get higher let me know what you get or what you don't get so seeing a surge of moisture kind of coming in here as we work our way into late Saturday Saturday night and then we'll see some spotty showers back behind this in Quebec, getting closer to New Brunswick as we work our way into uh, Sunday into Monday. So Jamaica, we're looking at isolated showers and storms. Cayman Islands as well, most of the heavier rain is just to the north, back through uh, Cuba. But look at us in Trinidad and Tobago, rain chance higher on Sunday and even Monday, upwards of a 60% chance. And creeping up in Barbados, we could see some uh, scattered showers on Sunday, mainly dry in St. Lucia the next couple days. Sunday, though, we are up to a 40% chance. Same thing in Grenada. Uh, this isn't going to be a washout, but the rain chance will be bumping up. We need some rain in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Rain chance Sunday of 40%, 40% chance Sunday in Martinique. Next couple days, isolated showers possible in Dominica. 20 to 30% chance in Guadeloupe, and about a 20 to 30% chance in Tigua and Barbuda. So at least we have a shot this weekend of a few showers around generally isolated St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat. 20 to 30% chance in Guilla and St. Bart's. 30% chance uh, today through the weekend. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia, fingers crossed, we get a few showers around Puerto Rico. This is generally afternoon and evening storms, 40 to 50% chance. And you see the rain chance going up a little higher, U.S. and British Virgin Islands as we go through the weekend. Bahamas is covering us. Uh, northern sections, we're going to see that higher chance of rain still throughout the day and even lingering uh, tomorrow. But you get to the south, southern Bahamas, into the Turks and Caicos on the drier side. Isolated storms possible today. We'll see some in the Dominican Republic. A one or two could pop up in Haiti. We had one pop up yesterday. 40 to 50% chance the next few days in Belize. Let me know your location in Belize and what you're getting or not getting. I'm keeping track of that since we're coming off of those drought conditions. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. The issue is as these tropical waves come at us, they're fighting that dry air and uh, some of that dust, and they, they generally fizzle out. Scattered to widespread rain, though, in parts of Guyana and Suriname. Let me know how you're doing with the uh, flooding. And then you see here in Cuba, this is our western and the better chance of rain today. Watching out for some flooding. Costa Rica, rain chance about 90%, about 60% as we work our way toward Panama. Nicaragua, 60% chance. Some of this could be heavy too. Honduras, 50 to 60% chance. And a 60% chance Guatemala and El Salvador uh, could get some bigger thunderstorms around. That could lead to some flooding and some slides in spots. Mexico City, mainly dry and all eyes on what's going to try to develop off toward the east as we work our way uh, into early next week. You can Catana, Mexico, rain chance 50%, and we'll be watching that developing system. Colombia, 30% chance today, 20% chance tomorrow. Spotty showers possible, a few around in Venezuela, and the higher chance of rain in Bermuda with that moisture coming out of Florida and the Bahamas moving in. So El Nino is gone, and that's typically bad news for the hurricane season, but I mentioned uh, while we'll be more active, we really need to track this storm by storm to see the pattern at the time, to see if there's any other variables in play. Yes, a lot of named storms that will 
will be kind of coming toward us, but then we'll see what they do as we go throughout the season. And I'm going to monitor throughout the weekend that new tropical wave headed into the Caribbean. So thank you for sharing this information, getting the word out there. Have a good rest of your day.